Hey, happy Friday. Welcome back to another Friday Tech Workshop. I'm Joseph, a senior developer advocate with AppSmith. And in this workshop, we're going to look at address validation and geocoding using the radar.com API. So address validation is the process of taking an incomplete address or maybe one with typos and matching that against a known set of valid addresses. So you can fill in all that missing info. And then geocoding, once you have the correct address and you've validated it, you can take that address and convert it to a set of latitude and longitude or coordinates. Now, the radar.com API actually returns the latitude and longitude with all of those address matches. So we can do both in one step, but it's two different processes and uh, maybe two different endpoints and other APIs. If you're just looking to do the address validation part or just the coordinates, this video should help. Um, but in this use case here, we'll be adding all of that data. So I have a data set in Google Sheets with some incomplete addresses, a couple typos, uh, missing zip codes. And what we'll do is use the API to find the first closest match and then fill in all that missing info and add the latitude longitude so that we can display it on a map. So first what we'll do is check out how to use the radar.com API and their API Explorer on the website. And then we'll set up a data source and actually connect to it with our data and start enriching that data, filling in the missing info. All right, let's check it out. Okay, I've got some mock data here in Google Sheets and all the addresses have some kind of error. I've got a few typos here, extra characters. Um, on this one, I'm missing the direction of the street. And then here I left out the type of street or road. And uh, we got a few that are just missing the zip code. So just a mix of, uh, of typos and, and missing info, but they're all close to a valid address. And we're going to use the radar.com API to send this string, the single uh, field of a ad partial address. And we'll get that first closest match from the API. And then we can save back all the individual components of the address as, as well as the latitude and longitude. So you'll need this to display it in the map widget later and to center the map. And you don't want to have to call the API again every time to, con to uh, convert this value to the correct location. So we're gonna go through the data and clean it up, use the radar.com API to uh, fill in this missing info and save it once. And then every future uh, viewing of this record will feed off of the latitude and longitude to center the map. And you'll have the components broke down into individual fields if you need that for later. So here's a quick preview of what we're going to build. I've got a table here displaying the data from Google Sheets. And when I select a row, it's gonna call the radar.com API and find the closest match here. And we can see that, you know, the missing or left out words here in the street name, it's got the zip code and the latitude and longitude. So as long as that looks like the right match, you can click save to Google Sheets. And we can see that it has saved all the individual components there and the latitude and longitude. So before we get into building the app, I just wanna take a quick look at radar.com here. Uh, it's a free service. It's similar to Google Maps. They offer the API for free with um, 100,000 API calls per month before you have to sign up for a paid plan. So you can get pretty far and build something functional with it. Uh, it's you know, more than just a trial. And uh, it's easy to use. Just go to the dashboard here and right off the bat, as soon as you log in, it's gonna have a set of test credentials for you to use and the actual uh, live API keys. Make sure that you um, regenerate these if, uh, if they get exposed. But we're going to uh, build something similar to what you'll see here on this View API Explorer. So what this is doing is taking a single string of an address and there's no zip code and the response here, it's an array. So it's going to send back this array of addresses and usually there's just one. In their example here, there's just the one address, one set of coordinates, and uh, that's the same type of response we're going to be expecting here. So what we're gonna do is use their API and if you go to the request side here, you can just copy this curl request and set up that same API in AppSmith. So I've got that copied. You can see it puts in the test uh, API key for you as well. And going back to the app here, 
So I'm going to go to page two here. I have a blank page started. And you can see I've got nothing on the canvas yet, no JavaScript here, and uh, no queries. So I'm going to add a new query and import that curl request. Paste this in here. And this should run right off the bat. I'm already getting a response back, but it is based on that address that's just hard coded here. So what we want to do is take the address from our row of data from Google Sheets. So let me name this before we go any further here. This is uh, address lookup. And we want to make this lookup dynamic based on the Google Sheet. So next, I need that data from the sheet here. All right, so next I want to add an API to get the Google Sheets data here. We have it already on the other page. I've already set up a Google Sheets data source. So I'm going to skip past that. We have a link in the description here with another video about setting up a Google Sheets data source. So today I just want to focus on the API side of this and the address stuff. And uh, I'm going to use my existing Google Sheets data source here. And we will call this get contacts. So we want to fetch rows here from the spreadsheet, and then you pick the what specific sheet uh, where your data is at. And here we go. We've got the same data that I was using on the first page, and I want to put this into a table widget. So back to the UI here, drag in a table. And then I'm going to connect the same query to get contacts. All right. So we're just displaying the raw data from the Google Sheet. And then I have an API that right now it's hard coded to that one address. So I want to take this selected address here and send that to the API and get back the, the exact match. So the address lookup here, the one using the radar.com API, I'm going to take this portion of the address, this query parameter, and we're just getting rid of that and opening up the double curly braces here. So I can type JavaScript and then we're referencing table one selected row dot address. So that's going to pass in that string. You'll, you'll notice that um, the evaluated value here shows spaces and the old version where it was hard coded. This has the URL already encoded. Um, so the spaces become a percent two there. What we're doing here, it's giving it as a, uh, a regular string. And then in the settings here, there's a setting to encode the query parameters. So it's okay that there are spaces up here. This is gonna take care of that for us, but if we turn this off, then we'd have to add all those extra characters. Um, so let's go ahead and test this out. It shows that it's taking that address from the selected row and there's that typo there, uh, extra character and we're missing the zip. And there it is, it's found a good match. So we're getting back some data that we could save back to the sheet. But before we get to the next API, I wanna just do a little work on the UI here. So we have a table and I want to see the response for the selected row. Um, since we're just working on the addresses, I'm gonna hide the email and the phone so that we can see what's over here. And then I want to see that response from the API. So we, when we select a row, we should call the API and then see that match come up. So what I'm going to do here is put a display for that response. That's our address lookup API. So in this response, there's an array called addresses. And then I want to look at the first element in that array and the address label uh, or formatted address. Um, these are the kind of ones that concatenate everything together for you. Um, so it looks like formatted address is just that. And we could also look at the latitude and longitude. Um, I think this is good for now just to show that we're getting something. So next, when I select a row, um, I want to see that update and call the API again. So on the table widget settings here, there's a bunch of different options and all these different sections. You can you know, look through here for the row selection. 
um, or just use a search. So this is a quicker way to jump to that setting. And when a row is selected, I want to call that API again for the address uh, to look up the address So right here. So now this address should update here. So it found a match. There's another one. All right. Next, we will display the latitude and longitude that's coming back uh, from that lookup. We want to display that here in a map. So we'll drag in a map widget. And there's a few options here. There's the initial location and then the markers. So you probably want the same thing. Um, if you have multiple markers, you might want to center somewhere in the middle that shows them all. Um, but we're just looking at a single location. So your initial location and your markers, probably the same point. Um, so what I'm going to do first, we'll get rid of the default marker here. And let's set the initial location to JavaScript. So it's just looking for a latitude and longitude. This one's not a marker. It doesn't have a, a title or a color to the point or any of those extra properties. It's just the latitude and longitude. And it is a single location, a single object. Whereas the default markers is plural, so that's an array. So we got to have a latitude and longitude to put here. Going to open up the double curly braces here. OK, and then inside of here, we want to put an empty object. And this is going to have a latitude property and a longitude. And then this is going to come from that API, the address lookup dot data. And that has the addresses array inside of it. So then in that array, we want the first element dot latitude. And I'm going to copy all of that except for the last property name there. And then get the dot longitude there. All right. So let's see if the map updates its position now. We got the text part to update on selecting a row. Yeah. And now the map position is a, it's updating based off that same API response, just off a couple different fields from the latitude longitude. So we can select any row find that matching address and display it, but we're not saving it back to the sheet yet. So we're almost there. Um, next thing I want to do is get an API to update the Google sheet using data from that response from that API. So going back to the queries, we're going to add a new query on the Google sheets data source. This time I want to update one. It'll be a sheet row from our geocoding spreadsheet and uh, and then which sheet on that that set of workbooks so then here we need a row object and it should have a row index property so if we look at the data coming back right now from the spreadsheet we're going to see all of the individual fields that that we've given names plus the row index and when you go to update a row in google sheets you need to tell it what the row index is so we're going to use the row index from the table selected row, the same row that was used to call the API for the address lookup. We'll take that number from here. All the other data is going to come from the other API. So the address lookup, this has those individual fields that we're trying to break down and save back. Um, and we're just merging those two data sets here. So I'm going to call this update contact. And in the body here, we'll use the double curly braces. We want to send this an object that has a row index coming from table one selected row dot row index. So whatever row we've selected, that's the row we're going to update. And then the rest of the data here is those other fields uh, coming from the other API. So first we'll do the street and I have used uppercase characters here for a couple reasons. Um, it's more common in Google Sheets. You're not naming it the way you would in a database. And it also forces you to, to have to set up the property names and map them to another value. 
um, if I use the same ones, it could actually be a little easier and there's some shortcuts, but um, I want to show how to work around it when those names don't match up. So the API response that we're getting back here, it's using all lowercase and I could have had a column called number and a column called street and just kept it one to one. And uh, chances are your data is not going to be like that. You know, it's in real world situations, you usually have your format and then you're working with some other system and you're trying to pull them together and things don't always line up perfectly. So we, we know where we want them to go, but they're not quite the same name. Uh, and here, number and street are two fields and I want to make them one. So in our API body then to update it, we'll call this one street or rather I've already called it street here with a capital. And then the value that we're gonna put here, it's going to come from table one selected row dot num uh, number. Oh, actually no, it's the API. Uh, this one's coming from address lookup uh, data. And then we go to the addresses, the first address there, um, and then it has a number. And we also want to add a space here and then get the street name. So I'll copy all of this in the street. And there's a much better approach to this. There's a couple different ways we could do it, but this kind of makes the, the most sense to as we're building it. Um, so here's the street. Now you can see it's combined those two values here and the API will get it as one and save it to that one field. So go to the next one here, uh, city, that'll have something. And then we've got state and zip. And I'm going to copy that again. There's state and zip. Oh, and this one calls it state code. Yeah. So they're not always going to line up perfectly. Um, and I kind of wanted to, to show that real world case here. So I think we've got just about everything now. This API is going to send data to that same selected row from the table and save those individual fields. Oh, we also want to get the latitude and longitude. Let's see, grab this. Okay, now we're ready. So I want a button to save this data. If this looks good, we'll have an API to confirm that and save it back to the Google Sheet. Okay, and then when we click this button, we want it to run the update query to save those values, but we also have to run the get query to repopulate the sheet and show us the changes. So just updating it, that won't actually update the UI. It'll send the data to Google Sheets, but we won't really see a change unless we go look at the sheet and we wanna see the change here. So on this button click, I'm first going to call the update contact query. And then on success here on the callbacks, if that's successful, we want to run the get contact query. And we could use the on failure here just to give a uh, alert. So if it does happen to fail when you uh, try to update the row, we'll just say update failed. And make that an error type. Okay, so I think we're ready to test this. We'll select a row. It's found the missing direction here on the street and the zip code. And the map is centered on the right latitude and longitude. So if we save that to the Google Sheet, all right, it updated on the back end and then it refreshed, it ran the get query to repopulate the sheet. And it looks like we got the latitude and longitude as well. So now we could have a map that's based off of those values and you don't have to call the API again every time.
So we're pretty close here. I just want to add a few more things. Right now, if I clear out some data on the sheet and we come back here to the app, um, the only way I have to refresh this is to refresh the entire page and that reloads everything in the app. So I want to add a refresh button here. And I'm just going to change the style. So I like to use the secondary or tertiary if it's not editing any data, it's just a refresh. And we'll get that refresh icon. And then on click, we will rerun the get contacts query. Okay. And then I'm just going to add a label here for the table, give it a header and a few kind of finishing touches. And you can use icons here, or um, sometimes I'll just throw in an emoji for looks to give it something to go with each title. Um, and let's see, let's do a header. And I'm going to use a button icon here. Grab a map icon. And I like to put a container around the header. And let's see, move this stuff down a little bit. And then set this to like your theme color or background color. And then just invert the, the text colors there. And that tends to work pretty good and it lets you switch the theme. So if you use these two theme colors, they're dynamic. And when you change that theme color, then it'll change with it. So, so instead of hard coding the colors, if you use the theme colors there, then it's easy to uh, switch back and forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this and we will check out the finished version. All right, so we can select a row. It's showing the match. If that looks good, we can save it back to the sheet. And there we go. We've got the latitude and longitude everything that we need to be able to display this data properly. Now, if you wanted, you could go through all of them and do like a one-time check and save this, or you could write a function that loops over the data and finds all the ones that are blank and just automate that process if you wanna automatically take the first response. Uh, but there's a bunch of different approaches you could use. And uh, I think this covers enough to at least get you started how to use the radar.com API. And then uh, for those specific cases, if you want to automate it, there's tons of approaches. Uh, we have a new workflow feature coming out that could be used. Uh, it's in beta right now if you're interested in testing that. You could also use something like uh, N8N to automate it and have that running as a webhook or whenever a new row gets added, you want to run this test and update it. So uh, a lot you can do with this API. There are a whole bunch of other services that we didn't even look at but they do have uh, searching and this will, this is different than the autocomplete that we used. Um, this is more for like getting lots of responses as you type. So if you wanted to, um, to be able to have that type ahead feature and list addresses, then you would use the search one instead of the geocoding. And then there's routes and maps. So uh, a lot of cool stuff to check out here. So if you got ideas for other workshops or anything else you'd like to see with addresses, feel free to drop a comment below or reach out on Discord. Hope this workshop has been helpful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you next week. Thanks.